Hi, friends. This intro is a little bit longer than usual. Don't get annoyed with me, but I really didn't want to cut anything out, as you'll see why, because this is such an amazing, important conversation that I think can benefit so many people and should be shared. Enjoy. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes. You might recognize her voice, but I'm joined today by the amazing, incredible, cute little Molly Burke. Thank you. I'm so happy. I like literally the only <laughs> podcasts I listen to are true crime or two hot takes. Oh my God. I could not believe because I must have been on your for you page the same time you were on mine because I saw you transitioning guide dogs. Yeah. And so that's how I started seeing your content. And then you reached out and I was like, stop. I know exactly who this is. I love nothing more than like hearing some good tea and giving my opinion. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I feel like I am the friend most people come to for advice. Not that I think I actually give good advice. I think I'm just very good at listening. Okay. And I'm always, I'm always the one who's like, do you want me to listen or do you want me to give an opinion? Cause those are different tasks. So different. And I think I need to start asking that before because I think it's like you kind of get lost in the sauce sometimes when your friends come to you and they just want to vent and then you're like, well, why are you still dating him? He's a piece of shit. And then they're like, I love him. And you're like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have been so honest with how I really feel about your partner. Yeah, I think I got to do that when my friends break up with people too because it's the worst when you just go off and then they're back together three months later. Oof. Oh God, very awkward. I'm like so really good at not giving my opinion on people's partners. Like, I feel like unless there's like an abusive situation yeah. where it is my place to be like, hey, it's time. this is unhealthy, this is toxic, but if it's a good relationship, but I just don't like the person, like that's not my place. It's yeah. not my place. And they will figure out in time that I was correct. I can get a read on someone and like a year down the road, they do exactly what I predicted. It's okay, wait, so what's wild. your read on me? I think you're very bright, kind. I think you're very genuine and like, I, granted, I'm going off of your videos and our limited interaction, but I want to keep you around. I just love you. Oh, I think yay. you're just so nice. And like our time at the TikTok party and chatting, I just I had such a good time. Well, it's so funny because we planned to do this and then we ran into each other a few days ago at the TikTok party. Yeah. So like we didn't plan to meet before no. today, no. but we accidentally did, which was kind of perfect. It was meant to be. And this is the perfect segue. So... Molly is blind. You've been blind since you were 14? Yeah, I've been legally blind from birth, diagnosed at four with a disease called retinitis pigmentosa, which causes progressive loss of vision, and okay. then lost the majority of my vision at 14. Okay, do you have any left at all? Light and shadow. Okay. So I can see there's two ring lights. Yeah. And then everything else is black, and I can see that there's like light glowing back here, which I know is the two hot take sign, but I can't actually like see. Okay. Like I couldn't read that. Yeah. I couldn't even tell you what color it is. It's, it is red, but that's so interesting. Um, so you happen to like get tagged in a video, and I'm sure if you've been an OG Two Hot Takes listener, you know exactly what one it is. And I've literally, I could have died. I've, I could have melted away in a moment. It probably would have been that one. So Molly and me were talking about her upcoming appearance on Two Hot Takes. And she goes, yeah, like there was an episode where, you know, someone on it said differently abled. And I go, Molly, it was me. It was me. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, and I, I haven't, I still like, we'll see comments from that video that pop up here and there. And it's, it's something we kind of got into a little bit at the party, but I heard that term because differently abled is not something I heard my whole life. I always kind of knew it as disabled disabilities. But in grad school, in my OT program, there was a group of disabled people that wanted to be called differently abled, which you had a great take on like where that's coming that from. That literally hurts my heart for them yeah. because they've been indoctrinated into ableism and don't even know it. Like, I don't know one singular, empowered, confident, disabled person who's like, I want to be called differently abled. Like this topic makes me so heated. Seriously, <laughs> it is just like the most condescending term ever that was 100% created by able-bodied people who were uncomfortable saying disability, yeah. who were uncomfortable saying disabled. Yeah. And the thing is, I am disabled. I can't see. 
that is a way in which I am disabled. Am I still capable? Yes, that wasn't the question. I am disabled, though. Um, and you can be capable and disabled. Yeah. And so... For me, not only does the term differently abled sound so condescending. When you say it like that, oh God, it's terrible. Oh, the amount of people who will come to me and be like, Fuck. you're not disabled, you're differently abled. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Well, I think no, I'm just disabled. Yeah. And I think it's like, it's so, it's such a disservice and something like I want to go back to my grad program and I, I say this every time something like this comes up, I need to send an email. I'm honestly a little scared which is why I've put it off. I'll do it. I'll help. Okay, I'll good. be your backup. Okay, good. We'll, we'll your coordinate woman. it. We'll coordinate it. I'll just connect you with them. You're the better. You you will just, just... send them my video about it. Just send them the link to my YouTube video about why you shouldn't say differently able to be it's like so, PSA. It's so annoying. Even with um like person first language, mm -hmm. that was slammed down our throats during my By grad program. By able-bodied people. By able-bodied people. But it's so, it's like, it's just disgusting how someone like myself or other OTs out there, PTs, whoever it is, and maybe other programs are better about it, but for them to constantly be like, I would literally write um, my treatment plans. And I remember one treatment plan I put like, uh, for this autistic boy, and I had my teacher redline it and be like, a boy with autism. And they just, the whole program, just person first, person first. Mm -hmm, Let's respect mm -hmm. the person. They're person first. And again, if you need to be reminded that we're people, the problem is you. Like you should not I have know. to have person first to remember I'm a human beyond my disability. And if you think of literally every other way we we speak, like just language, yeah. we say oldest son, not son who is oldest. We say trans woman, not woman who is trans. Like whether it's about another minority community or whether it's just like the way language is, we always put the descriptor first. And in, in no other circumstance are we like, but we need to remember he's a son, not just the oldest. <laughs> like, like what? It's so stupid. And again, it's able-bodied people who come up with these things. And the only disabled people I know who support these beliefs are people who have been indoctrinated into ableist beliefs, who have been surrounded by ableist people, which let's face it, majority of society is ableist by nature because we have had such limited access to disability education, representation. And so... Most people follow the medical model of disability, mm -hmm. which is inherently ableist. And so, yeah, it's just kind of this vicious cycle. And yeah. thanks to social media, we as disabled people in the disability rights movement um, are able to finally get a voice and share and voice these opinions. Yeah. Because until now, it's been able-bodied people getting to narrate our stories instead of us. And like, finally, we're taking back our own power and rewriting it. And to me, like... Am I a woman who is blind or am I a blind woman? I'm both, but blind woman is quicker and easier. Like, it just doesn't matter. And I am disabled. And at the end of the day, like, if we go around saying things like differently abled, not only is it condescending, not only does it expose you as being uncomfortable with disability, but also we're ignoring the fact that I am disabled by many things that society has constructed. Oh, yeah. And we're ignoring that by yeah. being like, oh, but you're not disabled. You're just differently able. You have all of these other special abilities that you have. So it doesn't matter that you're disabled. Like, no, it does actually matter. It's a big part of your life. It's a the big context, part of my life. The environment. It's a huge piece of who I Everything. am. Everything, yeah. And I, I have so many issues with my disability due to the fact that society has at large ignored us and our needs and our rights. And we need to have those very difficult and sometimes painful conversations, sometimes awkward Awkward conversations in order to further our cause and our voice. Yeah, I know. This is why I put myself in this position to feel a little uncomfortable with what I said. <laughs> but we we grow and we learn. And I think it, it is hard when, you know, the majority voice is we're disabled. We prefer that. And so I guess for, you know, people out there that might be struggling with their disability and how they view it and they are like more their preference is differently abled how would you recommend they kind of overcome that internalized ableism? 
Well, I think it's finding the disability rights movement. It's finding a strong, empowered disability community, whether it be online, which literally there is so many incredible disabled TikTokers, incredible disabled YouTubers, like just hashtag disability awareness on TikTok. And you will find so many incredible outspoken disabled advocates and activists Mm -hmm. um, to help you unlearn these ableist beliefs, because I grew up in an ableist community. I grew up in the cure community. I grew up like absolutely enmeshed in the medical model of disability. Yeah. Which says that disability needs to be cured, changed, fixed, healed. Yep. And when that's not possible, like for me, you end up walking around with a lot of guilt, shame. You feel broken. You feel not good enough. You feel like you'll never fit in. And how can you be a strong, confident, capable leader when you feel all of those negative things? Oh my God, no, it would be... Never coming to terms with something would probably be the most depressing thing ever. Like, it's just a vicious cycle of like, okay, I need to be fixed, but I can't be fixed. And so here I am. Like, it's absolutely yeah. like learning that you, you as a disabled person are whole. You are good enough as you are. You are exactly who you were meant to be. And I know that when you're stuck in this kind of ableist mindset, that's actually really hard to hear. And I know because I was that person. I actually felt angry when people used to say things like that to me. I was like, no, I am not. My life is horrible. It's so hard to be blind. Being disabled sucks. Like I, because I was just so stuck in that mindset. But once I, no pun intended, opened my eyes to this other view and I started being more open to seeing this incredible, vibrant, empowered community, I was like, wow, I can learn to just love myself as I am. And how wonderful would that feel? How freeing would that feel? And I can tell you, years into this it does it's the best feeling ever being like nah nothing's wrong with me something's wrong with society and I'm gonna put all of my energy into not changing me but into changing society yeah yeah no there's a quote I've shared a couple times on the podcast and I'm blanking on what it is right now but it's the fact that like it's not the disabled person that is like inequipped it's the fact that society is like so disabling for that person Absolutely. Like if I am able to read a Braille menu instead of ask somebody to read a menu for me, Mm -hmm. I'm not disabled because I'm reading the menu just like everybody else is at the table. Yeah. But if there's no Braille menu there, I am forced to ask somebody to read it to me and then I am disabled. How often do you find restaurants have stuff like that? I mean, they're legally supposed to, um, but most don't. That's crazy. Yeah. (laughs) Well, with uh, you think with ADA, like, I mean, there's so many online services that could easily print a couple Braille versions for them. Like, that is beyond annoying. I'm sure you, yes. you get heated about it. I do, as probably this whole rant has been evident. But no. But I just really, You're passionate like, about it. I'm really it's passionate. It's your life. And I want, I want other disabled people to get to this place, like to feel whole in themselves and to let go of the, the guilt, the burden they feel um, and to realize like you're not differently abled, you're mm-hmm. disabled and that's okay. It isn't a dirty word. And I know that these people were probably told like by an able-bodied person at some point in their journey when they were down on themselves about being disabled, like, don't worry, don't feel bad about yourself. You're not disabled. You're just differently abled. Mm -hmm. And I know that it comes with well-meaning intentions. Like I know able-bodied people who come up with these things, like they're either trying to comfort themselves because they're uncomfortable with the fact that maybe their child or spouse has become disabled or they're trying to... um, comfort a disabled person um who is feeling down on themselves but i just think like even though it's with the best of intentions it is actually more harmful than good yeah i would i would agree with that especially based on you know talking to you and learning a little bit more about it and i think yeah we i've said it i've i'm guilty of it i've said it and it's it comes from the best intentions of just trying to be inclusive but the the that isn't inclusive it's essentially discriminatory by denying who that person is so it's okay to ask somebody like how do you want me to refer to to your disability like what makes you feel comfortable um I know I love when people ask me that because then I will just say to them blind because a lot of people like I always joke like blind is like the b word like people like (laughs) people like literally don't want to say blind as if I don't know I'm blind like as if they're the first person to ever tell me so they'll be like Molly 
can't see very well. Molly is <laughs> visually impaired. And I'm like, that's actually more misleading than just telling people no, I'm blind because like, then they think I can see more than I can. I'm blind. Yeah, yeah I'm just blind. It's okay. Like, you can say it. I, I'm not going to be shocked. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I have some really good stories for you today that I think you'll be able to shed light on. I wanted to, because of, you know, the privilege I have having you on today and you being disabled, I picked a lot of stories that are speaking to that realm of disability. But after learning your horse girl and things like that, you know, I threw in some other ones too, but this is going to be a good one. I am very excited. I'm very ready. And honestly, I'm kind of nervous. No, no, it'll be really good. I just, I just don't want to have a bad hot take. I think I have one every episode. Please be kind to me. <laughs> uh, let's dive in. Okay, so up first, I, 21 female, have no clue how to cut off a toxic friend, 23 female, who uses my disability as a joke at my expense. This title sounds dramatic, but I can promise you it's a lot worse. Also, I'm on mobile, half asleep, and recovering from surgery, so formatting and spelling issues should be expected. Some background. I'm currently attending university, and I'm almost finished. I am also on the autism spectrum. I struggle really hard with making friends, so if I'm being honest, the only friend I've ever made on campus at my school is my now boyfriend, 22 male. That is, until I met Jenny. Jenny and I were in class together January of 2021. She messaged me through Zoom, and we exchanged numbers and kept each other afloat during that course. Due to the pandemic, we never hung out physically, but through text, she seemed to be really cool. After we both got vaccinated, we met up to actually hang out, and it was really fun. But I quickly noticed I had to set a lot of firm boundaries. She wanted to hang out every single day and would get upset with me if I said no, which I often did. She would invite me into group settings where all the jokes would be overly sexual. One girl there grabbed my ass, and when I acted in shock, they all brushed it off like, quote, all friends do this. And she would invite herself over to my house randomly and stay for hours. She would also just show up at places I was. If I told her I was teaching a piano lesson, she'd show up at the music studio. All of this was really bad in of itself, but I had a serious talk and it temporarily lightened up. However, things quickly began to spiral when I told her I was on the spectrum. Jenny completely changed. If we went out for mm -mm, lunch... Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> hate... Like, that's disgust. I, I, for, I assumed she had known the whole time. The whole time. Oh, my God. I'm it's, sorry. It's, it's gonna triggering. Keep going. Keep going. I'll, get, I'll, I'll say what I was going to say. I, I'll hold it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. If we went out for lunch, she would make a show of ordering for me, even after I requested that she wouldn't. Once, when I got excited, I started to drum, and she loudly proclaimed, Oh my gosh, you're so cute. I didn't know how autistic people actually did this. She and I worked together, and she would loudly bring up my autism and... Quote, are you getting sensory overload? It's pretty busy today around my coworkers. One day I told her I needed to talk to a professor we had together after class. And without me knowing, she went to his office hours to, quote, give him a heads up about my disability. <gasps> I still don't know all what was said. No, she no, that is literally no one's place. That is disgusting. Okay, go on. She introduced me to a large group of strangers, even though I had expressed I was not comfortable with that, and complained to me when I, quote, didn't act enthusiastic enough meeting her new friends. She even once tried to go behind my back and invite my boyfriend to her house to play video games with my boyfriend. Being an actually decent guy, he showed me the texts as soon as he got them. I wanted to test Jenny, so I texted her asking if I could join them, to which she replied, all we play is Stardew Valley. You'll probably hear the real games Colin and I play and get sent into sensory overload. Oh my God. Most recently, I was rushed into surgery as my appendix had exploded. She tried to come to the hospital. Did over she blame the appendix exploding on her autism? I would not be surprised. <laughs> she tried to come to the hospital over my own mother as my one allowed visitor. 
All these and more are the reasons I cannot stand this relationship anymore. However, I feel stuck because we work together and most likely have classes together next semester. I normally try to avoid confrontation, but this is just too toxic for me. How can I cut her off? Okay. Obviously, the first thing that sent me was Ooh. hearing this whole, she changed after I told her I was autistic. Yeah. Now, this really bothers me because this happens to me. Um, I had my worst experience was when I first moved to LA and I was trying to make new friends and I like went to this gathering with one, like the, my one and only friend that I had at the time. Literally been here for a few weeks. And so he introduces me to this group of friends. Shockingly, don't like introduce myself like, hi, I'm Molly and I'm blind. Like that's not my intro. Yeah. So um, it just like hadn't come up. Like usually I bring it up when it makes the most sense to bring it up. And I didn't have my cane with me. I think I had my service dog with me, my guide dog. And because service dogs are used for so many different disabilities now. Yeah. And also like, obviously people train, most people look at me and think I'm training him, to be honest. And if not, they assume I have some other disability. I've been asked if it's like a seizure alert dog, if it's a diabetic response dog. A lot of people assume it's a medical alert for a hidden disability. Okay. Um, and so I'm rarely is my guide dog pegged as being for blindness which is weird because guide dogs wear harnesses other service dogs wear vests but yeah i digress um <laughs> like some mobility dogs wear harnesses yeah. that look kind of similar but still like guiding harnesses are pretty distinct yeah they're pretty specific anyways so it just like didn't come up we're chatting she asked what i do i tell her i'm a youtuber blah 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 and she's like oh what do you make your videos about and i was like well this makes sense like this would be the time to mention that I make content about like lifestyle content. <laughs> Easy transition. That includes me being <laughs> blind. And uh, so I mentioned it. And she goes, <gasps> she gasped like She that? just gasped like that when I said I was blind. And she, after we had, we had already been talking for like 10 minutes. She turns to our mutual friend who's standing kind of in between us and goes, what happened to her? You said you were blind, not deaf, right? And I was like, ma'am. A, I'm right here. She said and I that can hear you. You were like still standing right there. <sighs> and I was like, I just told you I make content about my disability for a living. I'm clearly very comfortable talking about it. Like, what it was a goofball. so bizarre. And my friend was just like, like, what, what do I do? So I just stepped in and I was like, oh, I was, I was born with a rare disease that caused me to lose my vision. And she, again, to my friend goes... That's so sad. And I was like, what is happening? Like, it's, it's it a Twilight Zone episode. And like the just the way she treated me completely changed. And it's crazy to me how often people go from treating me like completely normal and like interact with me like they would anybody else to when they find out I'm disabled, they treat me like a child. Oh my God, that's so frustrating. Like I'm incapable. And so that's why that was so triggering for me because this is like very much a real thing. This, this happens is, to many yeah. disabled people it who can pass as able-bodied. Very similar experience with like this girl, the minute she said she was autistic, things changed. Yeah, so that's like major red flag number one. Yeah. And it definitely just spiraled from there. I am like, her, I'm like OP. I like ign I avoid confrontation. I am not a confrontational person. I think it's like years of being bullied. I'm just like, I like struggle with confrontation. We and all do. <laughs> yeah, so I get it. I like feel her on that. But I do think th she needs to somehow separate from this person who seems very intermeshed. I think if she's having issues in the workplace, I feel like it's completely fair to go to a boss. Yeah. And um, express those issues. Um, I think that also PS, if anybody's listening to this, it's not your job to out people's disabilities to anybody. Like the disabled person gets to decide when, if, and how they disclose. So to have gone and disclosed that to a professor is, is so vile. That's insanity. It like, like is so not okay. I can't believe he even accepted that conversation and wasn't like, um, I don't talk about other students. Thank you so much for visiting. Have a good day. I mean, I assume she maybe has an IEP, in which case like her professor already knew. Yeah. But like it is still never okay to disclose somebody else's disability for them unless they have explicitly asked you to. Um, 
but I would either just do like the nice um, slow ghost, like the slow fade, yeah. you know, where you just kind of respond less and less and like kind of ice them out to the point where they get it if you're like really don't want to do confrontation. But obviously that's like the last resort because that's not very nice. Not that she's been that nice to you, so she doesn't really deserve your respect, yeah. but like still. Um because you have to see her, I feel like it's better to do the respectful thing, which is just to have a conversation and be like, look, I don't feel like you're respecting my boundaries. I don't feel like you respect me as a disabled person. And I can't have people in my life who treat me that way. And so I... I'm going to have to end this friendship, like basically a friendship breakup, right? Like yeah. you would break up with a partner. Yeah. I think that's kind of her only resort, but it uh, it sounds like that might not even go well, considering the fact OP has tried to set so many firm mm-hmm. boundaries again and again and again. So I think your idea of the slow fade honestly might be the best way. I know. Even though it's like not nice again like the she even res- deserve respect like sometimes to me like ghosting is completely uncalled for yeah. when the person has done nothing wrong but if the person has been like an absolute a, like a piece a, of trash a goofball then, like, like this just like give them what they've been giving out yeah. right like you attract what you what you put out like give them right back give them the energy they deserve exactly you know what i'm saying well so this one flew really under the radar it was posted six months ago there's only 14 upvotes on the original post so like no one really saw this um but the top comment does say do the slow fade put jenny on an info diet right away don't tell her your location if you have if you have to hang out always have something scheduled right after so you can easily get away and just decrease the frequency you reply to messages until they move on Mm -hmm. it might be awkward but work will work in the long run and I think that's the best way yeah. to do. And like, and if she's like, why are you not talking to me? You can always just be like, sorry, I'm so busy right now. Exactly. And just kind of like keep yeah. pushing it off until she gets the hint and like stops trying. Yeah. I know the the fact they work together is so yeah. that, unfortunate. I, that's the very unfortunate part. And Ugh. that's why I think maybe going to HR or a boss, because ultimately like if she's really treating her like this, it's, it's in certain ways like workplace discrimination. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. I feel like it would be appropriate to go to the boss. I feel like the slow fade is honestly the safest thing to do with somebody who's this kind of toxic, but you still have to see in your pretty regular life schedule. Yeah. I feel like it's just the safest way of least resistance. I agree. I think that's yeah. even though it's not ideal, it's like the not. ideal thing is to have a conversation. Yeah, I do feel like you're right. Like she's disrespected the boundaries so many times at this point. Yeah. She's shown that the conversation isn't going to work. No, I think I think when you get to this point, like you're at your wits end with this person and it sounds like she really almost like wants to like tote her around like her token autistic friend and like show her off and like oh look at me I have an autistic friend I'm so inclusive I'm so great and mm-hmm. I mean it's a good that inspiration friend. porn it's that like I'm a hero for being friends with a disabled person I'm such a good person they use like literally use disabled people as an ego boost freaking weirdos yeah so I think I think you're uh you're spot on with the the slow fade and sometimes like some of some of her comments almost make me feel like she's making these comments to almost show like when she says things like are you getting sensory overload she's almost sounds like she's making these comments to be like look how woke i am look how aware of autism i am i know i know the lingo i have an autistic friend like i'm cool with you being autistic because i like say it i openly say that you're autistic to show that i'm so comfortable with you being autistic like it's just this (laughs) weird I don't know Weird. where the fuck she's coming from, but it's not okay. And I'm okay with the ghosting on this one. I'm a big advocate for not ghosting, but sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes ghosting is the only option. Yeah. Well, ugh, I'm getting like wear your skin vibes. So I think it might be the safest for her as well. <laughs> I'm getting you on Netflix. Literally. Yeah. Like just showing up. Freaking weirdo. Mm-hmm. Okay. Moving along. This one is probably like gonna relate to you very personally so if you do feel uncomfortable with it okay tell me and we can move on oh goodness I'm nervous I will not hurt my feelings if you don't want to respond to this one okay so the title is my parents are against me being with my girlfriend because she's blind and they'll say she'll quote limit my future options how do I deal with them being rude towards her and trying to guilt me out of my relationship 
Yep. Okay. Go on. <laughs> Let's do this. We're going there. We're going there. I'm so yeah. sorry. I just, I feel it's so important to address this stuff because I, I think you could replace blind with any disability. Literally any disability. Absolutely. Yeah. This happens all the yeah. time. And like whenever my girlfriends complain about how hard it is to date, I'm like, okay, so I have the normal 2022 dating struggles and I'm disabled. Yeah. Add that extra layer. So... Yeah, I get the dating struggles. <laughs> so they go on to say, side note, I, female 18, came out to my parents as bi a few years ago, and they were nothing but supportive and understanding. So I know this isn't likely part of the issue. I've been in a relationship with my current girlfriend, female 20, for a few months now, and my family recently found out and got to meet her. She's come over for dinner, and my family and I a few times, and she's always really polite, and they have good conversations. She's the kind of person who knows enough about most things to be able to participate in whatever topic. And in general, there's been a positive vibe when they're together. However, she's blind, and my parents seem to have a real problem with her being a burden on me or something stupid like that. After the first time she was over for dinner, my mother had a talk with me about how things were going, if it felt like a long-term thing, and I said, yeah. They sat me down again later that week and talked about how I need to always make sure I'm thinking things through and considering my best interests, etc. And I didn't feel comfortable, so I didn't prolong it. After she'd been over a few more times, and once again, there was no obvious issues in them getting along or any animosity, my mom asked to talk to me again and discussed how it's not, quote, in my best interests to be with someone who will, quote, limit my future options, end quote. I'd love to understand in what way she thinks she will, like a blind person will limit her daughter's future options. Like I'm very, I would have loved for her to elaborate on what exactly that means. I'm not sure if there con there's enough context. I didn't read this one, so I'm blind reacting with you. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> I admit when we talked, I reacted badly and got angry because she was saying it in a really condescending tone and acting like my girlfriend is helpless or something. She's really independent and capable, and I've explained that before. And since then, they haven't had a conversation for the past few weeks, but they don't like whenever I bring her up, and they've been a lot more cold and almost rude to her at points for no particular reason. They don't greet her when she comes over to hang out or try to show any interest. And when they do talk, they have this stupid patronizing way of doing it that irks me. I have no clue what to do about this because they've just been being discriminatory and unpleasant about something that doesn't affect them because they think she's going to limit me somehow. And I seriously hate it. I'm worried they're just trying to be passive aggressive to make her feel bad and guilt me. Advice is needed big time. Okay, I've obviously a lot of thoughts. Yeah. Um, I think this really speaks to the issues that that arise when we as disabled people don't have authentic positive representation. Like in 2022, we have 3.1% representation of disability across all media forms in North America, which is disgustingly low. 3.1? 3 3.1%. That's pretty small. Yes. Considering and like, do you know the actual percentage of population? Over a billion people in the world, 25% of the world's population is yes, disabled. Yes, so those numbers are very skewed. Yeah. So it's, and of that, of the 3.1% that we have, majority is written, directed, produced, and played by able-bodied people. So therefore it's inaccurate, inauthentic. Um, and as I said earlier, just perpetuates stereotypes and misconceptions, which leads to ignorance, which leads to discrimination. The vicious cycle, yeah. my favorite, which is why I have taken the route of creating content about disability to build representation yeah. for at least myself, at least my experience of blindness, um, my experience as a disabled woman, my experience as a service dog user, and try to use my platform to uplift the voices of, of other people trying to do the same. And it's clear that her parents have never seen or known of a disabled person like being successful. Mm-hmm. And being independent and being capable. What they know, their worldview of disability is probably what they've, the little they've seen in the media, which either pities us or praises us for simply existing as humans. 
I mean, the amount of times that like I am told when I'm out just like grabbing my coffee at Starbucks, like you're so brave. You're so inspiring. <laughs> and I'm like, um, you don't know anything about me other than the fact that I'm disabled. Yeah. Like you have no, like I could be a drug dealer. I'm not, but I could be <laughs> like, you don't know what I've done I in my be the life. Biggest asshole. I could be such a jerk. You don't know. Yeah. I could be the high school bully. Like you don't know that I'm an inspiration just for existing. If you know my story, if you know everything that I have been through, which granted is a damn lot, uh, you can say I'm inspiring because I have had to fight through more than even many people in my own community. So like, if you find what I have overcome inspiring, I am happy to be that for you. I am not happy to be inspiring for you by simply existing and getting my coffee. Yeah. Because you have no context. You have no context for what I've been through, how I've gotten here, where I am today. And so... Those are the only ways media has historically portrayed and framed our stories is with pity or with praise for literally existing as a human in society. And it's clear to me that these are the views that her parents hold of disability. Mm -hmm. And so I think one thing she needs to do is gather up like a list of, of content creators like myself and say to her parents, I would it would really mean a lot to me. I think she first needs to say this really hurts me. Yeah. Like the way you're treating my girlfriend really hurts me. And I think you're ultimately being discriminatory. And I think it's really good for her if she like frames this conversation with her parents as if other people were treating her that way. Yeah. Like how would you feel if I was dating a boy and his family didn't want him to date me because I'm bisexual and have previously dated women? Yeah. Like, how would you feel if your daughter was being discriminated against in a relationship for just simply being who she is? Yeah. So I think it's important for her to raise that flag that, like, as a bisexual woman, I can be discriminated against being in the LGBTQ plus community. How would you feel if this was me? Yeah. Um, because just like you're discriminating against my girlfriend for being disabled, something outside of her control, that is how it would be if somebody's discriminating against me for being bisexual. Yeah, which um, people do do that. So which it's, people it's, do. It's honestly, it could be a reality f for her if they At don't one, work out. Exactly. So I think it's important for her to like frame that this is why it offends me so much. How would you feel if, it, if I was being treated this way in a relationship by somebody else's parents? And here's like a list of creators or resources that I would like you to review, to look at that, to take some time to understand my girlfriend her community and like see how capable like this community is mm -hmm. um, how independent she can be like there are so many blind people so many disabled people who live alone who cook who clean who hold a nine-to-five corporate america job who pay their bills who are single parents like probably the single most difficult job you could have yeah like i have many blind friends who our single parents to like three or four children, you know, like I can't even imagine that as like me as I'm an like, able-bodied person. Kids exactly. scare the shit out of me. <laughs> I don't want to be. A, I don't want kids. So they're so me, scary. I'm like, oh dear God, how I do love you do them, it? but they're oh. love them from a very far distance. Yeah, I like to babysit at this point, but I, I, you know, I, I go back and forth on a daily basis. But they're scary. I don't. I'm pretty firm. <laughs> child free. I'm planted in my child free yeah. uh, existence. But um, yeah, I feel like that that is maybe the route to take. I also just selfishly like kind of hope she has not told the girlfriend because yeah. that is the type of thing that could kill a person's self-esteem for a very long time and could potentially, depending on where she's at in her self-acceptance journey as a disabled woman, really harm her for future relationships if this does not work out. Like that's the type of thing that could give somebody a complex. Have and so I, oh God, okay, give it to me. I'll stop, I'll stop. I can talk too much. So cut me so, off every time. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm trying to get better about not interrupting people. So I did search on the original post for Molly and there was one person that I know OP saw it because they replied to their comment, but they, they basically said like, this may sound off topic, but I swear it's related. Show them strong, independent, blind people living their life and how they don't burden anyone and they don't limit their significant other's future options. My brain immediately went to Toph from Avatar The Last Airbender, even though she's a fictional character and all things in that universe are a bit different. But the show really displays that she's not helpless and carries her own weight with the group despite being blind. 
Maybe show them videos from Molly Burke on YouTube so they have a bit more insight on how your girlfriend doesn't limit you in any way. Just a suggestion. And OP responds back and goes, I actually love that show. So I know they saw it. So hopefully they go to the videos. But we do have an update. Okay. Um, I made a post here a few days ago talking about my parents' discriminatory attitude towards my girlfriend because she's blind. I'd like to say thank you for all the people that took the time to comment on the post and help me out. Today, she wanted to come over again, and I told her about the post, so I decided to talk to them first. I sat down with my parents and discussed some specific issues and basically pushed them to actually name some ways they thought her disability would inconvenience me, and so I answered those concerns for them. After that, I asked them to please stop treating her the way they are and that it wasn't fair of them and enough is enough. I mentioned that she was coming to stay for the night and that if they talked to her, I wanted it to be respectful and inviting. They took it okay. And my dad definitely took it better than I thought. Mom, not so much. Afterwards, I spoke to my dad privately and just asked him to keep an eye on my girlfriend whenever they're in the same area and watch how she does things by herself and is independent. And he said, okay. Tonight has been okay so far. They haven't really had any conversations this evening, but there wasn't anything rude or condescending slash belittling, and I'm wondering how long this will last. I hope my dad actually pays attention and maybe points out some of the independent things to my mom, but I don't know. My girlfriend was pretty pleased when I told her about the post and said it was really sweet that I wanted to go and seek advice for how to help make them treat her better, so I got good girlfriend points for that. I figured people might appreciate this update, and I thought I would ask for strategies to use so I can keep this initial little bit of progress going and make it an actual change. Okay, well, I'm glad her girlfriend responded well. Yeah, um, seems very confident in her personal journey. I think a lot of us are also just very used to it. Like, I have heard people tell me they wouldn't date me because I'm blind since I was literally, like, 12. So I'm just very used to that. Like, I know, I know that there is a large percentage of the world that will never give me a chance because I can't see. Mm -hmm. And like, that's fine. I don't need you. Um, like, I don't want you anyways. No. So it's fine. Um, so I'm sure that her girlfriend is no stranger to hearing things like that as well. Though that said, it doesn't like hurt any less when you, when you, when you hear are it. confronted with it. I, my longest relationship was two and a half years and it was with a sighted, fully able-bodied man. And, I remember when we broke up, we we remained friends. And I, you know, I said to him, like, you've been in other long-term relationships with able-bodied women. Like, how how was our relationship different? Because I, I wanted the intel, you know? Yeah. It was my first long-term serious relationship. So I wanted to be able to, like, kind of get his perspective and maybe take some of, some of his feedback into consideration for future relationships. Yeah. Like, how could I be a better partner? Um, that's what everyone does you, yeah, you want to learn right? to go forward to not like repeat repeat the same your mistakes. yeah exactly repeat your past and grow that's like the whole point of like breaking up it's like okay this was great this taught me and now I'm going to move on to the next one and exactly. be even better exactly and it still sticks with me and I'm I'm so grateful that this was his response um but he was like honestly Molly the only thing different about dating is you couldn't drive like that was literally it like that was the extent of like the challenge it presented. Like we'd have to decide if like we both want to drink that we were going to get Ubers <laughs> or like, you know, like he's like, that's really it. That like, I knew I was going to be DD if we were going to a party and we want to take the car. Yeah. Like, but he's like, that's like, there's so many people who can't drive because of other medical issues. Like, you know, people with um, epilepsy often can't drive. Mm -hmm. um, there's also just people who are scared. They've maybe been in a car crash or had trauma around driving. Like, so he was like, that's really like the only thing that comes to my mind that it could be a little tricky sometimes. Yeah. And I was like, so lucky to have a relationship with somebody who like genuinely viewed it that way. Yeah. And I mean, let me just say our blind, my blindness had nothing to do with our breakup, like literally nothing to do with the, yeah. the reason our relationship ended. And is this the one that went to OT school? After? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I, I'm I'm grateful because I didn't like develop any further complex about being a blind woman dating. Because yeah. like I said, being a blind woman and dating is hard enough as it is between the discrimination, the stigma, and the just how hard it is to date in general nowadays. Yeah. Um, 
Plus combine it with like being in the public eye. Like that's obviously not for everybody. Oh my God, you have so many layers. I yeah, think. being a successful woman, that's not for everybody. Nope. Um, I've literally had guys be like, I would never date a girl who makes more money than me. I was like- Okay, then walk away. That's Bye. fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. So I, I feel like so I have so crazy. many layers that make dating. So I'm in the I'm in the like single for life era of my of my existence. I'm like, I am just never dating again. I I'm just happy with my with my dogs and my squishmallow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this will. Oh, I knock on wood here. I that scared me. Don't. And, oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, are the police here? <laughs> no, <laughs> they're coming for us. I don't anticipate being single anytime soon. Hence, I had to knock on wood as I'm like saying that. But um, if I ever were to become single again, I would love to try a matchmaking service. I think it would be just like so much fun. Honestly, I've considered doing it like just purely for content because I think it would be interesting and fun because I've never really other than like millionaire matchmaker. Did you go on a dating works. show? Didn't you go on like a YouTube dating show? Oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, my God. I feel like and it was the poor guy ended up like knocking wine all over you. Was that right? Or am I seeing a different video? I did mean, he if spill that his happens, wine? I've blocked it out of my memory. Oh, my God. I feel like probably for the best. It sounds yeah. awful. I've had so many bad dates, though. They all blend. Okay, yeah. I feel like I saw a TikTok, and it wasn't your content. It was someone else posting it. I'm going to have to... We're going to have to... Oh, my God. We have to find we this. We have to find I'm this. I'm so curious. But I think he, like, knocked over his wine or something. Let's see. Who did you go on this? It was, like, a dating show, right? I've like only a, ever done one dating show, but no wine was involved, unfortunately. Oh, man. I'm so curious, though. Did I do something and not even know I did something? No, I'm sure it wasn't you, and I'm just an idiot. Oh, my God. I have to know that. Now I want to see this. It was really, really good. It was, um, wait, today I surprised my blind friend with a blind date. Oh, oh, my God. Okay, with Joey Graceffa. Is it Joey Graceffa? I believe so. Oh, my God. That was a horrible date. Yes, he, yes. Ne he never told me he was doing that. Like, I was just like, what video are we doing for your channel? He's like, I'm not sure. We'll figure it out when you get here. Like, that was a complete... You like, got blindsided. I got literally blindsided. And it was a horrible date. Yes. So, so they weird. did a TikTok cut down of this video. Oh. And then the guy sat there like in like a post-date interview. And like, did you not... He, it was so It was weird. bad. It, it was, was cringy watching. It was the most uncomfortable I've maybe ever been filming a video. It was horrible. Oh my God. I didn't think of that as a dating show because it's just like Joey Graceffa's channel and like yeah. we just like did a collab. Sorry, that's why I didn't. No, and it was no. years ago. <laughs> no, like probably four years ago. The TikTok cut down that he did like made it seem like it was like almost like a, like, a dating show. No, no. It's just like we were just doing collabs. So we oh like filmed God. a video for my channel, filmed a video for his channel. And like I said, like I was like, hey, this is what I want to do for my channel. Like, what are we doing for yours? I oh love Joey. God. Like nothing against Joey. Yeah. But he like completely like obviously that I was like part of the bit was that he fully surprised me with it yeah but oh my god and afterwards I was like where did you find that person and he was like <laughs> I just like posted on Facebook if anybody knew somebody Stop. would be in a video like he didn't know the guy at all either oh my god that actually sounds very dangerous I mean he was like a nice guy but it was all very weird like yeah never would I go on a date with him. No, I'll post the link in the YouTube description so and the episode description because it's really funny. And I'll have to find the TikTok because the TikTok was like, oh my God, I don't think I ugh. ever even watched his post date like interview with him because I was like, I can't even watch this video. I can't it relive this trauma again. It was the most moment of my life. It was so uncomfortable. He was like, he was just bringing up topics that like made me very uncomfortable, but I was being filmed. So I felt like yeah. I had to go along with it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was just like, oh, I like feel like I have to like, go along with this but I'm actually very uncomfortable yeah. like it was just weird oh, yeah okay I'm glad it was you though because you do have pink hair in this video yes. too which I'm like was it her that's how many years ago it was yeah. I've had purple gray blonde since then you I've like been, to experiment uh, yeah I've been many hair colors since that era I'm not brave enough I want to go brown from blonde but I'm I'm what what hair color are you naturally uh blonde but I used to be like white blonde as a kid and now it's like sandy blonde and then so I do the highlights get like a cheap Amazon brown wig test it out I think that's what I gotta do yeah okay moving along um good update though I think there's definitely progress there by the way yeah yeah I feel definitely. like it could work out hopefully girlfriend sounds like a, a cutie they, they sound really good together they do I although I'm at a point where I've learned in my life 
when you're in a relationship, you're like also marrying that person's family. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And like, I am not interested, no matter how wonderful the man is, I don't think I'm interested in marrying a trash family no. who disrespects me. No, so that would be not. like very hard for me to get over. That would be like, yeah. if it didn't improve, like if years in, it was still an issue. I don't think I personally could stay in a relationship where I am a part of a family that like disrespects me. Oh my God. The mother-in-law stories I read, I just like, uh, those those women are saints saints and i i understand being in love but i'm like i for my own sanity like you can only put up with so much yeah it's just like uh, you're, you're like you're exposing yourself constantly to something toxic and it's just yeah. not healthy no no so this one my 24 female boyfriend of three years 26 male has become disabled and it's causing too much strain on our relationship let me start with this I love him. Our issues have nothing to do with ableism. Let's call my boyfriend Drew. Drew was in the military for a few years before we met. I met him in the last six months of his contract, during which he was dealing with some slight back pain. Then the pandemic hit. We've had our fair share of arguments, discussions, and tragedy over the last three years, but none hit more like August of 2021. Drew was walking down the stairs, turned to me and said, quote, I can't feel my legs. After agonizing months of doctor's appointments, including a medical malpractice incident, we finally landed on his condition, lupus, with severe arthritis and swelling near his spinal cord. He has all but fallen apart from this. Every month, we have a knockdown, drag-out fight about something he says. Tonight, and several times over the last week, Every time we get into an argument, he says, quote, I should be alone. You need to leave me alone forever. It could be an argument as small as taking out the trash. I'm the only one working. I work three jobs to support us. He relies on savings and VA disability. He pays our rent and car payment with his GI Bill housing stipend. But I am left with pretty much everything else. He is a hermit. I had to beg him to go out with me to get his hair cut for Valentine's. We went to dinner afterwards, and he seemed like his old self. We even came home and had passionate sex for the first time in months. I miss this part of him. I want to make him feel better and help him regain his strength again, but every time I try to help him, we get into a fight. He says I overload him with things he already feels bad about, but even when I remind him to do something kindly, he gets worked up and mad. I walk all around on eggshells constantly. How can I help him feel better Without being overbearing, all I want is to help him. But lately, he keeps pushing me away. Um, first off, if he is not in therapy, he needs to be. Yeah. He needs to be in every form of therapy. Step cognitive one. behavior therapy, talk therapy, couples therapy. Like, they need to be doing all of the therapy right now. Absolutely. Um, getting a diagnosis like that is life-changing. Absolutely. And yeah. you can't expect to just, like, cope with that and get over it without help. Like, without professional help. No, you are not equipped with the tools. If you are typically just an able-bodied person and you have something like this happen, you're not taught how to deal with this. You don't have the tools to just deal with a diagnosis and something so shocking on your own. Absolutely. No one does. No, they both need to be in therapy individually and they both need to be in therapy together. I think that's like absolutely step number one, super important. Yeah. I think that like seeing those glimmer, the glimmer of his, his old self in those little moments shows that like there there is hope yeah um but it's hard I mean for me like when I lost the majority of my vision I went through years of being angry resentful bitter suicidal like it was very hard yeah it was very hard and I by the sounds of it I mean this sounds like depression it sounds Absolutely. like he's really battling it and it doesn't sound like it's even you know, August 2021, it hasn't been even a full year. No, it's very new. Since his, yeah. Like That's so, very fresh. So fresh. And so, you know, there's not a lot of details of where he's at now. Like he has lupus, severe arthritis, swelling around his spinal cord, but it doesn't really give a lot of context. So not knowing where he's at, you know, if he's a wheelchair user or what his day-to-day -day looks like. I mean, I, I worked a lot with um, MS, people that were dealing with MS and it can be very limiting, but also there are so many adaptations you can make to still have a very full, fulfilled life where you're not limited by your diagnosis. 
Absolutely. At all. Yeah. So it's, I just, it's tough and I, I commend her. It, it sounds like, you know, working three jobs and, you know, dealing with a partner that has depression and is making this adjustment is a lot, but. That's why I think she also needs to be in therapy. Absolutely. Um, because this is a lot on her as well. Like I often feel like it was almost harder on the people around me who loved me seeing me go through what I was yeah. than it was me because you feel so helpless, mm -hmm. right? Um, watching somebody go through something so traumatic and feeling like there's nothing you can do to stop or change it. It's yeah. very difficult. So this is this is everybody's journey right now, not just his journey. And I think it's it's maybe important to have that conversation with him as well if, if you think he can handle it. Um, but I think individual and couples therapy would be very helpful in this moment. I also... As a disabled woman, like I myself have had to come to terms with the fact that dating me isn't for everybody. Not everybody can handle dating a disabled person. Mm -hmm. And that's really freaking hard to accept. That's really hard to accept. Um, and as much as I want everybody to accept my disability and to see that I'm capable and confident and to think that I'm good enough as I am, it's not the reality. A lot of people can't handle it. Mm -hmm. and there's going to be people who can. Um, and it's just finding that person. It's finding that person. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's like a really unfortunate situation, but I feel like it seems like she's she's really open to it. As she said, it's not like an ableist situation. It's not that she like believes he's incapable or like yeah. doesn't love him because he's disabled now or chronically ill. No. Um, it's It's... More so the mental health issues that just, are coming along with it. Yep, exactly. The bitterness he's feeling, um, the 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 Guilt. way she has felt like she has lost him, mm -hmm. right? And so I think it's really talking to him. And and it, if he's not open to therapy saying, then then this is done. Like, yeah. you've got to call, like, almost like play chicken, right? Like, be like, okay, well, I I need to like feel like we're both working on this. Yeah. And right now I don't. It's okay to walk away if it's unhealthy for you because you can't run yourself into the ground trying to love somebody who is unwilling to work on things. Yeah. No, and you, this is regardless 100%. of his disability, like regardless of his disability as a partner, you cannot run yourself into the ground helping somebody who will not help themselves. You need to think of yourself as well. And it's okay sometimes to be selfish. And to say, like, I deserve and need more than this in my partner. And again, I truly don't feel like this has anything to do with his disability. It's his mental health. It's his mental health and his and yeah. his unwillingness to potentially work on that. Yeah. And so I think if he's willing to work on it, I think there's a lot of hope here. So much. And I think this could really work out and be be great. But if he's not willing to work on that, um, then I think this could be it's not a healthy relationship for either of them anymore. No. And, and maybe he needs that wake up call. Yeah. You can only, you know, burn yourself so much to keep someone else warm. And I think looking at the context of this, saying, hey, we need to go to therapy. I think you should have individual therapy. I think that is such an easy ask. And he does, you know, being a veteran, he should have insurance that will cover that. He should be able to afford that. And so, I mean, that's kind of like the bare minimum to keep this going. And I do like... I just like from my experience with OT, something that was talked about in our coursework is like the gender disparity when like a partner becomes disabled and, you know, female or people that identify as women are like more likely to be abandoned by a partner yeah. versus males. And so, I mean, she's she's in the thick of this with him. And so she's trying to help him. But you also have to take some responsibility for yourself and your mental health. And I get you know, if he is in the thick of depression, mm -hmm. that is so, so difficult right it's now. so hard. I mean, I struggle a lot with mental illness and I get it. Mm -hmm. I work so hard on my mental health. Yeah. And like to the point where one of my new doctors was like, oh my gosh, like you really work at it. <laughs> And I was like, thank you. I do. Thank you for recognizing the years I have put into my <laughs> mental illness. Um, so I really think this is such a such an awful situation. Um, and I feel for both of them. I mean, I've been on his side. Um, but I also know that like 
caretakers can only do so much. Yeah. You know, and I think that sometimes with disabled or chronically ill people, people tiptoe around us. Like they don't want to be honest. They don't want to give us the truth. But like, sometimes you got to just give us the truth. Yeah. Like you don't have to pretend that everything's okay. Like sometimes I know I've needed people to be like brutally honest with me to kick my butt into gear, you know, and to be like, you're right. I do need to step up. I do need to do more. My blindness is not an excuse. My disability is not an excuse. My mental illness is not an excuse. I do need to work at this and be intentional, if not to save this relationship, to save his life, like for himself. Yeah. He deserves to be happier than he is right now. Absolutely. He deserves to live a better life than he is right now. And you can, and he, he will if he puts in the effort. Happiness doesn't come happiness takes work yeah well and lupus like it is a very scary severe disease but i have family with lupus he's a practicing lawyer works 70 80 hours a week like he is grinding and he has kiddos and a wife and has this very full life so it's like it's so scary to get a diagnosis like that but it doesn't it's not a death sentence Absolutely. You have to decide, like, do I want to be bitter and resentful and angry and give up? Or do I want to express those emotions, like feel it and then like kick my butt into gear and realize I deserve better than this? Like, yeah. I don't want to live like this. That's not a life worth living. Like, I want to feel better about myself, about my relationships, about my life. And like, mm -hmm. sure, life has drastically changed. There are things that you maybe can't do that you used to. There are days that are going to be way harder than others. There are going to be times when you can't or won't be able to get out of bed. But there are better days too, like that date they went on when he like got yeah. to have passionate sex again and got to like <laughs> get a haircut and like yeah. felt like himself, like live for those days, Exactly. you know, and I really hope for both of them that they can, that they can be healthy like obviously like living with lupus, I don't mean healthy in, in like the traditional no. sense, but like that they can have a healthy relationship as now um, an interabled couple. Yeah. The top comment on it is like just along the lines of what we said, and I'm really glad it was. Um, it says, go see a therapist. This is way beyond the scope of Reddit. He's obviously having a problem accepting his disability and you aren't doing the right things to support him. So you end up getting in a fight. Seeing a therapist will address all of these issues, helping him deal with his diagnosis, helping you know what to do and say to support him, and teaching you both how to continue your relationship in a healthy way. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, there is another comment under that, pretty much this. But to add, I was diagnosed with lupus eight years ago. It steals your life in so many ways. I've never met someone with lupus that has not struggled with depression. The things he has said, I'd wager everyone with lupus has gone through that. People with lupus only have so much energy. Taking him out in the sun to do things has a cost, which let's just go back to the spoon theory here, people. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing you can do for your partner is be understanding. There's a lupus story called spoon theory. Funny. I didn't <laughs> know that was coming. The idea is that you get so many spoons per day to use. It's different for everyone. But let's say his is five. Take a shower costs one. Preparing lunch costs one. Cleaning the kitchen costs one, and so on. Once you reach your limit, you can borrow against tomorrow's spoons, but then you start tomorrow with three spoons, not five. It's important to remember this. Just remember, he didn't ask for this, but he does have to try to get help. And OP saw it and just responded. I appreciate your response. Thank you so much. I think finding like a support group, whether it's in real life or huge. virtual, would also be huge. Um, like a support group for fellow caretakers yeah. to a loved one um, or for fellow like spouses or partners of people with lupus. And for him, finding a group for people with lupus um, would be really, really helpful as well. I completely agree. I um, The place I worked, it was like UCLA um, and they had a special like 
I think it was donated by one of the Hiltons um, who actually had MS. And so it was an MS center where we would do regular evaluations and evaluate where they were at, wheelchair fits, walker fits, all this stuff. But it also was an activity center. And they had so many activities where they would like just work together and like paint and like get back into things they loved and like seeing the camaraderie between all of these people and like such a safe space and like it was just an incredible place to work and so I think something like that would be really cool if he could find it yeah and I think also like finding new things that he can love and do and enjoy I know for me like when I went blind I thought of all the things I can't won't shouldn't be able to do and like it was all of the negatives like Mm -hmm. I was just in the negative spiral of thinking about the fact that like, I'll never be able to drive and I'll never be able to do X, Y, Z. And I had to grieve those. It's really important to grieve. And this is so early on for him still, as we said, less than a year. Less than a year. So he's got to grieve. You just have to grieve your old life. You're like, you literally have to grieve the death of the person you were and the person you thought you were going to be and the life you thought you were going to have. Yeah. And you need to learn to accept and build a new future build this new human like find this this new identity in yourself Mm -hmm. and I think that for me a huge helpful thing was finding things that I could do so instead of just focusing on all the ones I wouldn't be able to do anymore finding the ones I could so when I had to quit I was a competitive soccer player and when I had to quit competitive soccer I started downhill skiing for the blind oh that's really cool very different sports yeah but like both you know like action fast speed like um yeah I quit I had to quit when I was eight okay um, but I was a competitive soccer player until then I was center forward um I mean sometimes left wing sometimes right wing but always forward and so I was the runner you know like yeah. it's all about the speed getting that ball scoring so skiing like going down the hill really fast doing doing my best run yet like it gave me that same kind of feeling even though it was different mm-hmm. and so obviously given like the the energy issues that can come with chronic illness he might not be able to be as like physically active as he used to be. So maybe finding an alternative, like some kind of art form that takes less physical strength Mm -hmm. or energy, Um, just finding a new passion, playing the piano, something like that, like where he, he finds things that he can love and is passionate about and is talented at and can do. Yeah. So it's not just all about the things he's lost. It can be also about the things he's gained. Yeah. And she can really support him in finding those things. Absolutely. I think like with lupus and MS, like anything in the pool, as long as the pool isn't heated too warm is amazing um, because it takes the pain off your joints and your, your cooler. It's that is like one of my favorite things to see with OT is the water therapy. But then I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, he's a vet. And technically he wasn't disabled like during his military service, but Wounded Warriors is such an amazing program and they have so many cool um, adaptive sports. Like they have adaptive surfing, adaptive horseback riding. They have so many different things you can do within their organization. So I think even reaching out to that and having that like camaraderie with your fellow veterans and people that are dealing with, you know, similar things as you would be amazing. Yeah. He's got options. Mm-hmm. He's just got to be willing to now get the mental health in, in check so he can pursue them. Totally. Okay, moving along. I just found out that I've been dating my biological brother for six years. Oh my God. I saw, I, I heard a blurb of this. I am 30 and my brother is 32. I'm just going to call him my boyfriend for the majority of the time while I type this. I feel weird about this. I was adopted as a baby, but I didn't know that I was adopted until I was in high school. I didn't feel betrayed or care much. I love my parents and my parents love me. Who cares if they aren't my real parents? My boyfriend was also adopted, and when we met, it was one of the things we sort of bonded over. We both didn't learn we were adopted until high school, and we were both really lucky and had good families. We weren't passed around from foster home to foster home. Our relationship was and still is great. We understand each other very fast. We were attracted to each other quickly. I've never met someone I felt immediate attraction and familiarity with. Now, I know that that comfort and familiarity is because he's my brother, not my half-brother. He is my full brother. We've done everything a couple that has been together for six years could do. 
We've said we love each other. We've had sex. We've celebrated anniversaries. We've met each other's families. I'm just glad we both agreed early on that we don't want to have kids. So that has never happened. I don't want to deal with the health risks and have to raise a child and them know that their parents are siblings. I discovered it when we did the DNA test thing to see our ancestry and what exactly we are. I ordered two for us. We spit in the tube and sent it out. It took like a month for the results to come back, and I was excited to see what we were. But before I could even get to that, I saw that we were siblings. I was shocked, to say the least. I only just found out this information and haven't told my boyfriend. I'm really hoping they made a mistake, but things are kind of starting to make sense to me now. We always get the, quote, you guys look so alike, or he's the male version of you. Long before this test, we've always gotten compared. We always just laughed it off, but I have spent the morning looking at pictures of us together and realizing that we really do look so alike. It's freaking me out, and I don't know what I should do. I still love my boyfriend slash brother, and we have been together for six years. We have a house together and a whole comfortable life. I'm really hoping that this test is wrong and we'll do a real test soon, but I'm panicking. I still see him as the love of my life. There are so many layers to this. So many. It's like I I heard it yesterday and it's still shocking to me to hear it again. I think, okay, there is always hope that it was wrong. There's always hope that like, there was a tube mix up, um, but obviously the whole adoption situation looking alike, being so similar, red flags. Um, yeah. Did you, I've heard that you're more likely to stay married if you marry somebody that looks like you. Funny really? Enough. Yes. Yes. I'm so curious. Yeah, very interesting. But anyways, there is um, like a, oh my God, what is it called? Like familial attraction like where I can see that there like it's a, it's a known thing like it is a known phenomenon that family members who grow up not knowing each other like a father and a daughter or mother and a son siblings will find um, each other when they find each other when they're older it is uh, like a romantic there is a romantic sexual attraction that is wow. like a no if you google it right now there is a name <laughs> on it and it's driving me nuts i've literally watched documentaries about this okay because it is it's really it's a it's fascinating um and like obviously like we cannot blame them like it would be very easy to be like ew disgusting it's not their fault like they did not know genetic sexual attraction exactly there is a go. concept in which strong sexual attraction may develop between close br- blood between close blood relatives who first meet as adults yes so it's a real thing it's it a is real a real thing. thing and that's even between people who meet knowing they're related yeah like i i've seen a documentary on it and it was like a lot of the couples like met knowing that they were related and still ended up in a sexual relationship. Wow. And it, it, it's like, a it, yeah, it's a known phenomenon. So the fact that she, like they had an attraction, like it, yeah. it's not necessarily surprising or unusual in this circumstance. It's obviously heartbreaking and very sad. I wish for her sake, she had not found out alone. Like I wish they yeah, had found out together. together. Why? Because it's now like kind of on her yeah. to decide what to do with this information and how to tell him and bring him in on this. For sure. I, my heart is like absolutely breaking for her. I have so much empathy for what she must be going through. There is there is no like There's no easy way. There's no easy there's no easy answer no. for her. Like this is an extraordinarily unique and complex situation. Um And I, yeah, I just feel a lot of empathy for her right now. For sure. I went back and forth on this one too, because I'm like, okay, well, technically they're siblings. So, okay. It's a little goofy, but they grew up completely separate. They don't plan on having kids. This wasn't a situation where they lived in the same house. Like I also found a story today where it was a sibling story because I was trying to find this one again. And it was a sibling story and it was like, I'm 21 and I've been having sex with my brother since we were 16. They live together. They grew up together. Wait, no. Yeah. No, no. That's completely different. And so even this different. like, this, this thing, what what's it called again? The familial? The- oh, gen- I already closed the tab. No. Genetic sexual attraction. Like even this is, is people meeting yeah. as adults who never knew each other as yeah. children. So like, it, no, that's weird. Um, that is major problems. Um, oh yeah. That's I, disgusting. I found one. 
I don't, I'm like, did I read it or am I going to read it? I probably will read it soon if I haven't. But it was one where um, the daughter found out that her mom and dad were actually twins. <gasps> no. Oh and my they God. like ran away from Germany together because they wanted to be together. Okay. No. So many, so many no's. With so all this of those is so ones. much better. This is so different. So much like, better. Truly like they don't need to feel guilt or shame. This is not their fault. They this did is, not know. Like, this is pure chance. This is pure chance. Like what is the likelihood? Um, crazy it's really crazy i just my god like, would you tell him i yeah i think he has to know he's gotta know i think like the guilt and um like carrying that secret from oh her god. from the love of her life yeah i think is too much to him. hold i think you guys need to work through this together and i mean as long as you're not bringing children into the situation i think it's up to them to decide how they navigate from here on out yeah and like oh god i just have you, I'm so glad it's them and not me. That is just... It's a tough one. So tough. Ugh. You definitely can't tell each other and like decide what you're going to do with your relationship, but I don't feel the need for them to tell anyone else. No, no. If they like decide. That's, that is their private information. Yeah. Um, people, there, there's like people don't like have any kind of right to your personal private information. No, no. So the top comment on this one... Wow, that's quite a bombshell to find out. Well, step one is to tell your boyfriend now since he is currently unaware and this is something he needs to know that is going on. Then get more testing done to confirm the results. Past that, it's up to you two. Definitely no kids, so it's good the two of you already made that choice. And if you decide to stay together, I'd recommend not telling anyone that you're biologically siblings. And so OP responds, I want us to get a real test. I wish I never decided to do this. Fuck. Oh yeah, I mean, I absolutely second all of that. That 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 poster said, yeah, like, all of that is absolutely the route she should be taking. Next steps, um, and if you know what, and if they end up deciding to stay together, because you're already six years deep, you know, know. what's ten more? Um, well, I like, feel what's like it gonna what's change? Been, what's gonna change? It's, what's been done has been done, and if they one day decide they do want kids, uh, it'd be beautiful for them to adopt, just mm -hmm. like they were both adopted. You know what I mean? So like, I feel like, oh, like I don't think any of us watching this, listening to this, reading this post, none of us can judge them. None of us will ever probably be even in close of a situation as this. Mm -hmm. And we just cannot judge. We we don't know what we would do in that situation. So like I'm I'm supportive of them doing whatever the heck they want to do as long as they don't bring kids into it. That's they can do whatever they want to do. I yeah. Mean, I completely agree. It's really unfortunate, but like also kind of a reality that maybe is more common than we think because OP does have a comment on here um, where they go just want to say thank you to the other adopted people who told who said that this was a big fear of theirs it came true for me but I'm so glad I'm not the only one while during a hookup was like am I related to this person it's scary not knowing anyone you're related to absolutely and that's the thing like how many other circumstances are there where this is a reality mm -hmm. um and only because of things like 23 and me and ancestry.com have we been able to uncover them and i mean so many dark family secrets have come to light because of these dna testing yeah. services oh that my have god been, like i hear them all the time have you seen um our father on netflix yes yet? yes yes oh my gosh yeah. exactly so like so many who knows how many people have gone through life in this exact circumstance and just never found out because DNA tests weren't something we all used to just run around doing. No. So yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. Good luck to them. Best of luck. Yeah. My heart goes out to them. For sure. I will keep my eyes peeled for an update on this one. Please let um, me know. I will. I'll keep you posted, but it sounds like they're going to like hurry up and get a test done. But it sounds like she does still like really want to stay together. Um, comments a bunch and just says like nobody else knows and I still love him so I'm I'm very well, also, curious like she just found this out right so she hasn't even been able to process or work through her own emotions oh my god no like as this unfolds over the next weeks and and even months like mm -hmm. they will probably go through a lot of ups and downs and like a lot of different stages yeah. of, of emotion um because they can't unknow this 
right? Sure. Like they will never unknow this information. And again, like she's in the awkward position of being the one who found out first. Yeah. So she now has to be the one to break it. It's just, oh, it's a lot. It's really rough. Um, but I think, you know, as weird as it is to say, I think this is the one case I'm okay with dating your brother. Like, I think kind of like we said, like what are the chances they've been together six years and just got to deal with it the best you can. Yeah, it's it's a really unique circumstance of, the most. of incest. The most unique. Yeah, this, that's so hard. <laughs> okay, moving along. This one has been a roller coaster of a story. I've been following since the very first post, and we finally have an conclusion. Update. Yeah. Okay, good. I like stories with conclusions. I like lo- with updates. I need it. I need it. I just like I hate feeling so unresolved and like I'm missing something, which is really unique for this story. So it's a wedding one. And we typically don't hear from the wedding ones where they're like, I'm getting married and I I chipped out on catering and I um just didn't want catering and I wanted to have Mickey and so blah 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 blah. And we never get updates. But we have it here. Okay. Okay. How wild is this? Story? Like, do I need to be prepared? Because we've 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 heard some things. We we have this one. I would say on a scale of one to ten, it's entertaining, but like you feel sick over it. I think a three, four. Okay. okay. I don't know. There's some. I mean, there's some homophobia involved. Oh, no. So that may be a seven. There's a lot of moving parts here. Okay. Let's delve in. Would I be the asshole if I didn't go to my brother's wedding over a bridesmaid's dress? I'm currently in medical school and live across the country from my brother slash family. I was surprised when his fiance asked me to be a bridesmaid because I barely know her, but she wants to have all the siblings in the wedding. I made it clear that their wedding was during my final exam week, and while I was able to get an accommodation to take my last two exams early, I still wouldn't be able to help much with planning or or be present at things like a bachelorette party slash bridal shower. She said this was fine. It would mostly just be to have an even number of bridesmaids to groomsmen for pictures. There's a group chat that was created months ago that I would read through every couple of days to get updates on things I needed to do, namely to order a bridesmaid's dress. Links were sent with three styles to choose from, and we would be updated on colors later. So a couple weeks go by and I ask what color to order. Bride says she is still thinking about it. Couple more weeks go by, and she's still thinking. Then a couple more weeks. You get the idea. Now, it's at the point that if I don't order this dress in a couple of days, it won't be here in time. So I ask on Saturday what color. No response in the group chat to me. I asked again yesterday, Sunday. What color do I need to order? Then I'm flooded with messages, lamb blasting me for not ordering a dress yet. From Isn't her. it lambasting? Is that how you say it? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Lambasting me for not ordering a dress yet from her sisters and my sister and her. My sister called me and told me to, quote, get my shit together and order a dress already because my lack of preparedness is causing the bride intense anxiety because she doesn't think my dress will be here on time for the wedding now. She texted me this morning, quote, don't forget, order your dress. Love you with smiling and kissing emojis. Still, no one has told me what the color is. I've scoured the group chat for a mention of dress colors or an image of a dress, but only the maid of honor sent a photo of her dress, and I don't know if she has a special color. There's thousands of messages, so it's not simple to find anything. Everyone else can meet in person, so I assume the decision on color was relayed in person. I can't tell if I'm being purposefully excluded. About an hour ago, my brother called me, pleading with me to work things out with the bride because she's panicking about me. I tried to explain this to him, and he told me he doesn't care. It's a petty ladies issue, and since I'm not there for anything else, this is the least I can do because the bride thinks I don't like her because I wouldn't come to anything. He's taking her side. They know I'm in medical school. And I have literally no say in my schedule. I'm on the other side of the country, five and a half hours by plane. I'm fed up with them and contemplating telling my instructors the wedding was moved and will take my exams at the regular time. I'd have more time to study that way anyways. I haven't told anyone in my family I'm considering this. Would I be the asshole? 
tell her the damn color. It's not that hard to text the color. Blush. Blush pink. Pastel blue. Just text somebody. Text her the color. <laughs> like, the... how hard is it? Um, it's so bad. That said, if it was me, I would just look at look at the photo of the dress that was sent and order that color. Like, I do think, like, if you're not getting a response and you know that time's tight, just order the color of the one you saw. And if you show up in the wrong color, be like, yo, here's the evidence that none of you were telling me. And this yeah. is the only proof I had of which color to order. Because I think it's quite rare that, like, one person in the bridal party has a different color. Like, it happens, but I'd say yeah. more often than not, everybody wears the same color. I would say... I don't know. I feel like I've been to so many weddings lately where like each um, each bridesmaid has like the same color but a different style to yes. like fit their bodies. Yes. And like, I love that. I, I think that's love awesome. That. I love that too. But then I had another wedding, my friend's sister, who um, just said like, get gold. It can be gold sequins. It can be gold satin. It can be gold, whatever you want. And so that was really cool. So everyone kind of had- those as well. Yeah, yeah. So like everyone had a different color. And I don't know. I- I don't remember what was my initial thought on this and I'm so biased now where I'm like, I can't, I just don't even want to say my take. Right, because you've read the I've whole read, thing. I've read everything. And so I'm not even sure if I picked up on it, you know, a month ago when I read the original post, but the comments did an amazing job of sussing this one out for sabotage. Mm. They thought this was so intentful. See, my mind doesn't even... I'm, I'm just not conniving. You're too nice. So I'm not conniving, so I don't, like, think of manipulation. Or, like, I don't... Like, my mind just doesn't go to sabotage because I would never sabotage someone. Yeah. So, like, I my brain doesn't even... doesn't even compute that way. Yeah. And everyone was just like... <sighs> the initial comments were, like, group text. I would love to order my dress. I would love to have ordered my dress a long time ago. In fact, I don't like being pushed to the wire anymore. But I've repeatedly, repeatedly asked for the dress color. Next comment. Group text. All caps. What color dress? Next comment. All caps. For the love of God, tell me the color so we can end this living nightmare of misery, Jennifer. This this is like so frustrating. Like I'm frustrated for her. I'm like, what is the color? <laughs> well, and it's like weddings are stressful and like it's kind of a common thing like oh haha bridezillas people are going to be high strung during their weddings and on edge and blah, blah 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 but she also went above and beyond to ask multiple times yeah it's not multiple. that hard like it's really not that hard of a question to no. answer so there is the first update I called my mother and asked her what color the bridesmaids' dresses are. She said lavender. The only color option on the website that I would call lavender are named pearly lilac, periwinkle, and orchard, orchid, orchid. Orchid. Oh my God. I'm really bad at pronouncing stuff. I knew exactly what you were trying. I was like, she's trying to say orchid. orchid. I, could, I could feel it coming. <laughs> I could feel it. Orchid purple. I texted the maid of honor, bride's sister, to ask what dress color and got multi-paragraph long lecture about not having ordered my dress yet. Basically, they are trying so hard to accommodate me being across the country by including me in the group chat. She said she didn't remember the shade name, but it's a dusty purple. Ben sent me a blurry picture of a wrinkled order confirmation, and the shade name was Mulberry. Oh, Lord, what is going on here? On the dress website, that is a darker wine slash purple color. I so told, not lavender. Not like, a, nobody would call that lavender. No. I told her this, and she said to order the lighter, dusty purple color. <laughs> I sent her a screenshot with a list of shade names and asked which of these. She said she didn't know because everyone ordered their dress so long ago and asked for pictures of the dresses in different shades from the website. This is so much more complicated than it needs to be. I don't understand. It's like they're speaking different languages at each other. Yeah. Like there's such a miscommunication where it's like so purposefully intense. There's such a miscommunication about something that there should not be a miscommunication about. No, this is purposeful incompetence, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. Such a different way. So I sent screenshots of all the light purple colors. No response for a while, so I called her on the phone. And she was upset about it because it was past 10 p.m. over there. Her response was, quote, Look, I don't care what your problem is with me and my sister, but if you want to stay in good standing with this family, you need to get your ducks lined up, girly. <laughs> I ignored the lecture slash comments and asked, What color? Her response, light purple. Of the three I sent, which one is it? 
I don't remember. I'll have to ask one of the other bridesmaids for her receipt. I'll get back to you. I want to bash my head into a wall. And I say that a lot on the show, but that was OP's writing. I called my second brother, the one not getting married. He said they're pulling similar things with him, and he feels like he was deliberately given the wrong dates for the bachelor party by the best man, who happens to be the bride's brother. What is going on with this couple? So that he would miss it. They are conniving. He inadvertently learned about the change date the morning of, and when he asked the best man, he told him it must have slipped his mind to tell him. Then joked that he wouldn't have missed much since he probably wouldn't have joined any of the, quote, festivities anyways. They've been making homophobic jokes and comments to him that he's been ignoring, but he thinks they're trying to get him to back out of the wedding. So if we both back out, then there will be an even (gasps) number of bridesmaids to groomsmen again. No. Oh my God. God. Only speculation on our parts, of course. And so the top comment even had an update and goes like, edit, big paragraph, edit to, um, like trying to like still be the devil's advocate. Like guys, I rationally know not everyone looks good in lavender, blah, 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 blah. And then edit three. Now I've read your edit OP, go scorched earth with these people. Stop communicating. They're being shady jerks on purpose for whatever reason and are treating you like garbage. Screw that long ass group text I suggested. Just say this. You can all suck a fart straight out of my butthole. That's your wedding gift. Don't bother letting me know how it tastes because I'm not talking to any of you anymore. Then block them. But that's not done. We, We get more. We get more. So to the final update. Dun, dun, dun. What is it? What is it? What is What was the result? Oh, my God. So thanks to some of the responses, I called the bridal salon and asked what colors were ordered. Four dresses in the color Flint, one in Mulberry. The maid of honor was setting me up to believe Mulberry was the color of all the dresses. So I ordered one in Mulberry and one in Flint. I only let the maid of honor know I purchased a Mulberry dress. I caught a red eye to be there for the rehearsal. Oh, I love that she's giving it right back to I, them. This is what I live for. I caught a red eye to the, be there for the rehearsal. They had a room to get ready in the morning and wanted all the dresses sorted there. I showed up with my mulberry dress. The bride begins crying because it's too late to fix it. She asked if I would be upset if asked to drop out because mulberry is for the maid of honor. I pretended like I had made such a big mistake. I said, quote, I know a girl that works at the salon. Let me call her and see if there's any way to make it right. And if not, I'll step down because I want you to have the perfect day. (laughs) I show back up the next morning and start getting ready with the correct dress color in tow. Quote, my friend looked in the back for me and they just had this returned yesterday. What are the odds? Exact style, color, and my size. It's a sign. (laughs) Silence. Then an awkward, quote, that's amazing. Now I'll be honest. I thought the revenge would be that they had to have me and younger brother in the wedding and photos. I couldn't have planned for the next part. What? They had to explain to the makeup artist there was an additional bridesmaid, meaning they planned from the beginning (gasps) that I wouldn't be in this wedding. Oh my God. So it was, that was the whole thing. The ceremony went fine. We took pictures after. Then there were no place settings for me and my little brother with the wedding party at the reception since banked on one less bridesmaid Mm -hmm. and one less groomsman being present. The table was almost not long enough. Two chairs had to be thrown on the ends. We didn't get food initially because we were actually in the seating map at other tables. Wow. So our plates were brought to those place settings. I can tell my brother, the groom, seemed ticked off at the staff for seemingly not having things set up properly, but the bride and best man diverted his attention. Before he, the groom, left, he found me and said he asked the maid of honor, why the settings were wrong. And he was told I asked to be dropped from the wedding party weeks ago, then showed up and demanded to be in the wedding. Still throwing her under the bus. Still throwing her under the bus. I said, I didn't ask to be dropped 
and showed him my phone where she gave me a thumbs up on the dress. He noticed the screenshot was not the dress I was currently wearing, so I said I had to last minute switch it out after confusion on the color. He seemed satisfied with that. They left on their honeymoon, and my brother returned several days early, dot, 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 alone. <gasps> so you can guess how that went. And that's all we got. Oh my God. <laughs> Fucking crazy. It's so, I feel so bad for people who like get bamboozled into a marriage. Oh my God. And then there's a bait and switch. Like yeah. once you're married, like the real person comes out. Yeah. I heard like this crazy story about a girl who married a guy and then like when they were supposed to be going on their honeymoon, like he started acting really off. Oh, and no. then basically like months later, she found out he was like a very, very severe opiate addict. Oh, wow. And I'm like, that is just so... It's hard to hide stuff like that when you go on like an extended trip together. Right. And yeah. so it's just like, that is just something that's so hard to find out at, like right after you get married. Oh my God. You know, like those are things that should be very transparent going into a marriage. For sure. And it's just like, I hear these stories like that and it's just like, oh God, that's so tough. Like, cause essentially you tricked somebody into marrying you. Yeah. Like it would be like if I like pretended to be sighted, which I obviously can't do. Like there's literally no way I could pretend to be sighted. Though yeah. people think I'm pretending to be blind all the time, which is the funny thing. But I like literally couldn't pretend to be blind but or be sighted, but it's like if, if I could, you know, yeah. like it would be like me pretending I'm sighted, marrying them and then being like, surprise, meet my guide dog. Like it's just like, you can't do that. Like no. marriage is the most serious life choice you will potentially ever make. Yeah, it's definitely a everything big, has to be on the table. Big commitment. Yeah, I I cannot believe that. I it's so annoying to me that the brother didn't pick up more on it or or like didn't believe her when she was texting him being like, "No, they won't give me the dress color." It's like, "Oh, this is a petty girl issue. Like, figure it out yourself." It's like, "Just be my brother. Like, have my back. Like, get your head out of your bridezilla's cooch. Like, <laughs> come on, buddy." But I'm really happy with how it worked out. I, I still feel unresolved in the fact I need to know what happened on the honeymoon. Yeah, right now that I, now I'm that's what that's now what I'm like hyper focusing on. And I'm like, ooh, I know what went down. Well, and it was only, um, it was only this last update was only posted two days ago. Oh wow! So this wedding just happened. Yeah, and so it's. I'm just like, I just need to know. But OP comments so, so much. Um, basically kind of just being like the bride and her mom and her other sister are really, really close. Like the bride goes so far as to be like, you're my mom. Like, I love you. And the sister and her are besties. And so mm. there was like a lot of like confusion or even like suspicion to like how much involvement her own mom had in all of this. Right which was shitty. And there's one comment that she says, little brother and I are the black sheep of the family. I've wondered for a while if our mother is a narcissist and my little brother and I shared being the scapegoat. There's a reason I moved away from them. I'm hoping my little brother will too. So lots and lots of comments. Family drama, lots of family drama. So much, but I will keep an eye out for an update. And hopefully we can find out what happened. But no, nothing about what they were fighting about. Interesting. Yeah. She does um, She does say, I'll try to remember to keep you all updated. I don't have all the in-person details because I flew back home. But through my little brother, I've learned that currently our older brother isn't speaking to his wife. <gasps> our sister is still her bestie and she is trying to get them back together. It's unclear if anyone, aside from the bride and groom, knows his knows exactly what happened on the honeymoon. I wouldn't be lying to say I hope this ends in an annulment. Oh my lord. I actually just heard about a like a, a friend of a friend who got tricked into marriage. Oh my god. Um recently and it's like my biggest fear. Right? <sighs> I think this is why I'm gonna be single forever. Or we'll just you just apply for the matchmaking service. Do it so I can live vicariously through you. I want to know. I want to know what it's like. <laughs> I do too. I really want to know what it's like. Like there's um there's a show. It's like Millionaire Matchmaker. Yes, yes, yes. I, it's so good. I I live for reality TV, and it's not even something I realized until recently, where I started watching like Mama's Boy on TLC. Don't know it. Ninety Day Fiance. 
Oh, yes. I've got, I, I have been known to watch a season or two of 90 Day Fiance. I love Love is Blind and Married at First Sight. I love romance. Love is Blind. Like mm-hmm. romance reality shows get me. Yeah. I'm right there with you. It's my dirty pleasure. A hopeless romantic. Okay, one last one for you. Am I the asshole for buying horses instead of helping my friend out of debt? My friend got scammed last week and ended up losing 30000 Her parents are not offering to help, and she's on her own. She told me she called everyone she knew for money and got approximately 6000 but she's about to be homeless and completely broke. I told her I could, at most, let her crash in my house for a month or two while she got her stuff together, but that I wasn't going to lend her any money. I don't have a job, and I live on my parents' allowance. My parents taught me never lend money, because if the word gets out, I'll have a lot of people suddenly struggling to make ends meet. Anyways, yesterday I bought some horses, because horses are social animals and I only had one, which I think is sort of animal cruelty. My friend found out and got hurt that I would rather spend money on horses than, quote, someone in need. I find it very hard to sympathize with her because she got scammed very obviously, and I had told her before I do not mix finances with friendship, but I do understand why she could be upset. My other friends said that it was insensitive, that I should have helped a little, but again, I don't know. Am I the asshole? Wow. <laughs> We have we have the horse bias on our yes. on our side here. Um, that's a lot of money. That's not a like that's not a uh-huh. little ask. That is a major ask of a friend. Like how close are these friends? Like you got to be family level, and like like I got to be rolling in dough, and you got to be my family. You know what I mean? Like there's a yeah. like if she doesn't have that much money. They're not even maybe that close of friends. Like it didn't really go into how close they are. Yeah. It's just really risky. If she already lost a lot of money making a stupid decision, like, do you really trust her with your money? Like, I that's a, uh, yeah. I would, I don't, oh, that's really tough. That is such a huge ask of a friend. And like, that's a risky thing to do. Like, especially if you don't have much money to lend a friend a lot of money knowing they just made a major financial mistake, which is why they're in this situation. Oh my God. Yeah. But then hearing like, but they might be homeless. I think the ways to help is like offering for them to stay on your couch. Yeah. I you think- know what I mean? Like there's other ways to help that aren't enabling them to potentially be reckless with your money as well. I completely agree. Cause I like looked, I was like creeping just now and I'm like, what, how did she lose the money? Because I, my poor grandma and her husband went through this and he literally just got scammed out of thousands and thousands of dollars. And it's it was one of those scams that you literally see on TikTok or YouTube, mm-hmm. like someone calling from a call center in India being the IRS. like, hi, um, is there a problem? Like, we need to refund you money, but we need your account information. And he, oh my God, I feel so bad for him. He literally went out of his way after getting scammed because he gave up his account information. He then got scammed into like going to, stores and buying gift cards so he then got like five thousand in gift cards for them and just like my grandma lost so much money and as someone that like they're living off social security at this point in their lives like they're in like their 70 late 70s 80s so it's tragic elderly people are me i the biggest um like at risk for these kind of scams because it's technology scams and they're they're very vulnerable when it comes to that so I was like, okay, what did this person get themselves into? And by the sounds of it, it's cryptocurrency. Mm. So OP goes, she got into using money to make money type stuff very very early on, where we she would convert money from currency to currency to make more money from the exchange rates or something like that, which may have been low-key illegal, LOL. Um, and then just people are like, what do your parents do? I want my children to buy horses on their allowance. I sound sarcastic, but I'm dead serious. And so OP goes, my dad is a realtor. My mom's side of the family is in politics. Someone else asks, how old is she? She's 25. Wow. So. I mean, I think the good news is she's young enough to be able to dig herself out of this, right? Yeah. Like it is much harder when you're older. Definitely. Um, I think, like I said, the better way to help as a friend is to offer for her to be able to stay for a few weeks till she gets her feet back under her. Yeah. Or... Like, 
help her find a job at your place of employment if that's possible. Like, Mm -hmm. I think there's other ways to help that don't put your finances at risk. Um, Yeah. I mean, a, a roof over her head is so, so nice. Like being unhoused is like, it's so, so stressful when you're faced with that, you know, potential. So, um, I just, it's really tough. I have like a really weird situation with the condo that we live in where it was gifted to my dad, like, and not necessarily gifted, but he, he's able to live here for as long as he lives because an aunt bought it. And like, so the trust owns it. Right. And it's like, it's very, it sounds like very rich people problems, but like, because of COVID, my dad has been like essentially unemployed for three years, hasn't been able to make HOA payments, hasn't been able to do anything. So like we were getting foreclosure letters in the mail and I'm like so thankful that this podcast and like I have listeners, I have a platform now because I literally was able to like pick up the pieces and like keep a roof over our head, which is something I've not admitted to anyone, which is like, I'm just like oversharing right now. But being faced with that is fucking terrifying. Yeah, I can't imagine. I can relate to her in that sense where I'm like, I have so much empathy, but at least like a place to live is covered. And I don't know what like OP's allowance is, but if she does have like an allowance where she's still living like month to month based on that allowance and her current expenses and all that, like she can't put herself out to help her friend. Like you can't go into debt to help somebody out of their debt, right? Yeah. It's like I was saying earlier, like you can't burn yourself out helping somebody else. Yeah. Like you need to prioritize yourself sometimes and that's okay. Yeah. Um, I always say my goal is to be like selfless when it matters the most and selfish when it matters the most. Like I need to at times put myself first. Yeah. Otherwise I'm not going to be here. That's you know? such a fine line to tote too, because mm-hmm. I, I find myself doing that where I'm like, I'm kind of a people pleaser in some sense. I'm very much a people pleaser. But I also just try to be a good friend and I put myself like I overextend myself yeah. sometimes and then it comes back to bite me in the ass. And so I think kind of like we've said, like finances is very dicey to and I think, mix. again, there's a way like even say in a world like where she does have some more financial freedoms. Yeah. Being like, I'll, I'll like help cover your groceries or like I'll take you out for some meals. Like mm-hmm. I think there's, I'll, I'll put some gas in your car. Get me back when you can. Yeah. You know, like I think there's a way to, to aid her that isn't like, let me give you thousands of dollars that I don't know what is going to happen to it. Yeah. Or like there's a bigger commitment to get that back. For sure. Or if, and if you are able to and want to do that for a friend, make sure you put a contract in place. For sure. As if it is a loan. Yeah. Like from a, a, from a bank. Like make sure, even if there's no interest, like make sure that there is a payment plan that you guys are yeah. putting together a payment schedule for you to make your money back and that there is, there is an agreement in writing because first case you can take her to judge judy and (laughs) i hear judge judy pays for whoever wins exactly yeah so i think that there's like if if you are able to help a friend financially or family member that's incredible to do so and i know if i was ever in the situation where i where i needed to do that for somebody i would make Mm -hmm. sure to get it in writing and a payment plan up created yeah to hold that person accountable for sure um yeah well and luckily she's got a roof over her head if OP even went above and beyond help with food, amazing. But also she's already got $6,000, which is a shit ton of money. Like that is money. It's actually that, quite impressive. Like a lot of, by the sounds of it, great friends. Because I mean, I know people that like, especially right now with our economy and everything, like kind of taking a shitter here. But like six grand, like I'm pretty sure I could stretch that three months. Totally, especially if you are able to maybe stay on the couch. Like I was lucky that when I left my job when I was younger and was starting out doing what I do now, like my parents were able to take me in and allowed me to stay rent free. Like that's super fortunate. Yeah. And I know that that's not something that everybody has. But if you are able to find somebody who is is kind enough to give you that, um, then all of that money can go into paying down your debts and, you know, paying for the essentials. For sure. That's all I got for you. 
All right. I feel like <laughs> we <laughs> had a lot. That was that was intense. I need food. I'm I hungry need food. now. I'm, I'm like, I need pizza and ice cream. I need all. I need to 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 heal mm-hmm. my heart mm-hmm. from all of this um, chaos. Chaos <laughs> with like bad food. I need have all the had, bad foods. Have you had Mendocino Farms? Oh my god, I love Mendocino. Farms. Their chicken sandwich. Yes, that's, I think that's what I'm gonna order. Oof, that sounds magical. Their avocado salad is also incredible. The kale one? The superfood? Yes. Yes. <sighs> okay, you can tell we're hungry. So <laughs> let's get Molly out of here. But where can people find you? Uh, you know, all the platforms, literally all <laughs> of them. Um, at Molly Burke Official, M O L L Y B U R K E Official. Amazing. I'll be sure to put all of Molly's socials in the description. But thank you, thank you so, so much for coming on. Um, this has been absolutely amazing. And I. I'm just like so grateful because as I said, like I feel very mad about my my OT education and some I just think like we all have a lot of ingrained tendencies. And so it's it's amazing having someone who is disabled come on and be able to speak to this topic. Yeah. I mean, I I hope I did my community proud. I am not perfect. Like I'm just one human trying my best. And I try to give a lot of grace to everybody else. Like we're all just trying to do our best in this world. We're and I really believe you're grinding. Yeah, I really believe like most mistakes are made with no mal like no malice. You know, yeah. like it's it's all innocent. Mm-hmm. And so thank you for allowing me to come on. I hope I did an okay job. I know I talk a lot. I'm sorry, everyone. I know I talk <laughs> a lot. And no, you did great. I know I cut people off sometimes. I get excited. Me, also, when you're blind, you I can't see people talking. Yeah. So me like and you both. it's hard. No, which like. I I don't know what we were just talking about, but it reminded me, oh, when people like accuse you of like faking being blind, um, there's like conspiracy theories on the musician. Uh, Stevie Wonder. Stevie yep. Wonder, mm-hmm. where people are like, no, Stevie Wonder got in an elevator with me and made eye contact with me. But I'm like, as I'm sitting here talking with you, like you make eye contact, but it's, it's just... I feel like it's almost natural when you turn your head to look at someone. Yeah, it just like happens. when I hear, when I know where your voice is. I know we're about eye level. I yeah. know you're right beside me. Yeah. So I can just turn and look. It's like not that hard. Um, people are freaking weird. People are freaking weird on the internet. Uh, I'm like, would you like to see my stack of medical records this big? <gasps> I'm sure there's a whole Reddit thread there devoted is. to Molly Burke is faking blind. Yeah. What? Yeah. We're not going to look because no. we don't we don't read negative comments. No, I don't. I don't look at that stuff. <laughs> Well, thank you again. We don't need to, we don't invite toxicity into our lives, ladies and gentlemen. I try not to. Just kidding. I I'm I'm getting better. But until next time, guys. Bye. Bye.